Okay, so last year in 2019, I made a video titled How to Buy a Gun in California. And I was hoping that I wouldn't need to make another one for at least a long time. Hopefully, I was expecting that maybe it would get easier. Unfortunately, that's not the case, and it's actually gotten a little bit more difficult for the 2020 year. And we're going to go into some of those differences. We're going to talk about people that are 18 to 20, how they can buy a gun, and people that are 21 and older, how they have to buy guns. There's a little bit of difference depending on how old you are, and there's some exceptions, but we'll get into those. Let's jump on into it. So I'm going to give you a quick, too long, did not watch version of this, and then we're going to go into who can buy guns, how old you can be to buy certain types of guns. And throughout this process, I'm going to describe some documents or reference some documents you might need. At the end, I'm going to cover those documents. So if you already know what those are, great, you don't really need to watch the full video. If you don't, you're going to need to watch those certain parts of the video. This year, I am actually going to leave timestamps for the certain sections that might be interesting and important to you. So quick too long did not watch version. So the typical process is you basically you can't buy any assault weapons and any handgun you buy from a dealer has to be on the approved list by the state of California. Once you buy a gun, you're going to need to do a background check. You're going to need to do a background check every time you want to buy a gun. However, you can do multiple guns at the same time. Every single time you do a background check, there's a 10 day waiting period, 240 hours from the time that you start the paperwork to when you can come pick it up. You can only buy one handgun from an FFL every 30 days. Starting in 2021 in July, it will be also including semi-automatic centerfire rifles, but for 2020, you will only be able to buy one handgun every 30 days, but any other combination of guns, as many as you want, all the time, every single day for the rest of your life. You need to have a clean criminal history, and I'll describe some more of that, what that means later. The process is going to take about an hour. Um, you want to give yourself plenty of time because it will take a store employee to be sitting there with you to do the paperwork. So don't be in a rush. Have plenty of time allotted. So there's going to be three types of proper documentation you might need. First, you're going to need an ID or some sort of driver's license. You're then going to need a safety certificate, either a firearm safety certificate or a hunting license for long guns. And then you may need an additional proof of residency depending on what you got going on. And I'll get into that later. So the federal form that you're going to end up filling out is called a 4473. And basically what this is, is a one page that you fill out on the front. It asks all your personal information, your height, weight, hair color, where you're born, that kind of thing. And then it's going to ask you a few questions and I'll go over those now. So the 4473 background check questions that are on it. The first one is asking if you're the actual buyer or transfer of the gun and you are. So you're going to want to say yes. The other questions, if you answer yes to them, you will not be able to legally take possession of the gun. They're asking questions like, are you a felony? Are you under indictment for a felony? Are you a fugitive of justice? Have you ever renounced your U.S. citizenship, been dishonorably discharged, been adjudicated as mentally defective, convicted of a misdemeanor crime of domestic violence? Um, and now there's a specific one that is also going to cause you a little bit of issue. It asks if you're an unlawful user of any controlled substance, and now it says at the bottom of this question, warning, the use or possession of marijuana remains unlawful under federal law regardless of whether it has been legalized or decriminalized for medical or recreational purposes in the state you reside. Basically, don't ask, don't tell. I have more information here where I talked specifically about weed and guns in the state of California. So the 4473, pretty simple, should only take you about 20 minutes to fill out all this information. If it's their first time, if it's not, it'll take much less time, but chances are if it's not your first time, you're not watching this video. So the state has their own form, which is basically the same thing. It's going to be done on a computer typically, and it's going to be filled out by the actual gun store. So they're going to take your ID, take all the information off the 4473, and then fill out what's called a dealer record of sale. After they fill out that dealer record of sale, they're then going to have you sign and thumbprint it. And that dealer record of sale has a time located on the top left portion of it that says when you can actually come pick that gun up. That is going to be the exact moment in time that you must come after for you to get the gun. So we've talked about the state and the feds, the documents that you fill out. So let's move into who can actually buy a gun in the state of California. Now you have to be a California resident. You can be a resident alien of another country, but you're going to need your green card. 
If you are a military member that is stationed here with duty station orders, you can also buy a gun, but you're gonna need to bring in those documents proving that you're stationed here. Now, if you have a criminal history, like if you're a felon or if you're a fugitive of justice, or if you have domestic violence restraining orders against you of any kind, you're not gonna be able to buy guns. And we talked about that specifically in the 4473 section. I will leave a link below with more information on prohibiting offenses. If you believe you have a situation like this, you can fill out what's called a personal firearms eligibility check. What a PFEC for short is, basically you fill out information that would be typically on a background check, send it off to the state, and they will tell you yes or no whether you can buy a gun. This is gonna save you some time and effort. If you're unsure, if you're unable to get a hold of a lawyer that can help you out with your specific case, this would be the best option. If you have any sort of confusion, you don't wanna risk it. Because if you run a background check and you fail, that's technically a federal crime and you don't want that on your record. It's also most likely gonna cause the gun store to then charge you money. Don't want that either. So now that we've covered who can actually buy guns, we're gonna talk about the different age brackets and what it's like for them, what they can buy, what they need to bring in. And throughout this, like I said earlier, I'm gonna mention specific documents. Documents like an ID, a safety certificate or a hunting license, and proper proofs of residency. I'm going to discuss at the very end what those all pertain to because I don't want to have to have it jumping around for you to have to figure out, oh, do I have to jump to minute two to see this? So we're going to talk about that at the end. So if you're 21 and older, let's talk about what you can buy and what you can't buy. Obviously, you can't buy any assault weapons. You cannot buy from a dealer any handgun that is not on the approved for sale list. Now, you can only buy one handgun every 30 days. You can also buy any shotgun and any rifle. This includes semi-auto, rimfire, bolt action, lever action, anything you want that is legal in California, you can buy as a 21 and older person. If you have a firearm safety certificate, the firearm safety certificate will allow you to buy anything other than a long gun. A long gun is a rifle or a shotgun. If you want to buy a receiver, or if you want to buy a pistol, or if you want to buy some weird other category of firearm, you're going to need a firearm safety certificate. If, however, you have a hunting license but not a firearm safety certificate, you can still use that to buy rifles and shotguns, but you can only use that to buy rifles and shotguns. As always, with these, there's going to be a 10-day wait. Like I said, handguns, only one every 30 days. However, this does not prevent you from buying private party another handgun within that same period of time. So let's say you buy one handgun from a dealer and you then find someone on Cal Guns or some sort of internet forum or you have a friend that wants to sell you one of their guns. You both come on in, you do the background check and the paperwork on that handgun and it's exempt from that one in 30 day. There are some exemptions to this, but I'm not gonna cover that today because it's not relevant for the average person that's gonna be watching this video. Now, if you're 18 to 20, this is where it gets a little bit different and a little bit more difficult. If you're 18 to 20, you're technically in the state of California, not a real adult. You can't smoke cigarettes, you can't buy alcohol, and you can only buy rifles and shotguns, and only specific rifles, and only if you have a hunting license. So you're not technically an adult as far as state of California is concerned. So let's talk about that. So as an 18 to 20 year old, you can buy with a hunting license. You need to get a hunting license first. Any shotgun, semi-auto pump, doesn't matter. As long as it's not an assault weapon, you can buy it. You can buy any rimfire rifle, and that's fine. It can be semi-auto, bolt action, lever action, whatever you want. Rimfire is fine. If you want to buy a centerfire rifle, as of 2020, you cannot buy a centerfire semi-auto rifle. So you can only buy bolt, lever, pump, brake action, or any kind of non-semi-auto centerfire rifle, which is unfortunate. So kind of unfortunate that you have to be 21 to exercise the full rights and you can only do it if you have a hunting license. Second Amendment's not about hunting, but to get off my soapbox, continuing forward. If you're a cop, you are now a higher citizen. You can buy handguns as well as receivers, not just limited to rifles or shotguns and not just limited to non-semi-auto rifles. Also, if you're active duty military stationed here or from another state stationed here, you can also are going to be exempt. So the documents you might need, um, if you're gonna be buying a handgun, you're gonna need a firearm safety certificate. If you're gonna be buying a receiver, you're gonna need a firearm safety certificate. 
if you want to buy a rifle or a shotgun, you can get away with just having a hunting license if you happen to have that already, but a firearm safety certificate will also cover that. When you buy a handgun also, you're gonna need what's called a second proof of residency, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Now, no matter what, you're always gonna need a valid California ID or driver's license. If you are a resident of another state stationed here as part of a military duty station orders, bring in your out of state ID along with your duty station orders and you're all good as well. So I'm gonna be reading off my phone for just a second while we talk about the ID and driver's license requirements. There's a couple different categories. Let's say it has the correct information, the wrong information, or it has the correct information or wrong information, but it says federal limits apply. Let's talk about that. So let's say your ID has the incorrect information on it or it has a PO box on it. Now, you're gonna to need to prove your residence here to both the state and the feds. They each accept different things, but there are a few documents that are common that will be accepted by both. So let's talk about those real quick. To prove to the state that you live here, you're gonna need a, a bill that's physically attached to the house, like water, cable, power, uh, physical telephone. Garbage won't work, cell phone won't work. Anything that's not physically attached to the house won't work. You can also bring in a lease agreement or a deed to your home. Now, all of these, any of these documents will have to have your name and they will have to be recent or valid. If you want to prove to the feds that you have, that you live here, you're going to need to bring in a government printed document. Typically, people can get things like a five-year DMV driver history report, or if you are able to prove to both at the same time, you can bring in a vehicle registration, your CCW if you have it, a government permit or license other than a driver's license or ID card, or a, one that most people do also have is a water bill from the city. Most water municipalities are actually government agencies. So for example, if you're in the city of Marin and you have city of Marin water bill with your name and it's recent, Bring that in and you're good to prove to the state and the feds. If your ID says federal limits apply, there are a couple options for what you can bring. Typically, your passport or your birth certificate are going to be the easiest things for you to get a hold of. There are a couple other options, and I'll leave links below as always that will cover it more, but it can get a little weird and I'm going to recommend that you talk to your gun store about the specifics of what they accept because their discretion is ultimately the final call. If your ID has your current physical address, you're all good. You don't need to prove anything to the feds. However, if you're buying a handgun, you need to bring in a second proof of residency, like I talked about being a utility bill, lease agreement, or a deed. If you are buying a handgun, you will need a firearm safety certificate. If you, have a, if you wanna buy a long gun, a hunting license will work. However, a firearm safety certificate will also work. Now, throughout this, I've talked about firearm safety certificates and hunting licenses. Let's talk about those. So a firearm safety certificate, what it is, you're going to go to any gun store. Any gun store is able to issue these. You go in, you're going to take a 30 question, multiple choice and true or false test. This is super simple. It's covering safety and laws in the state of California. There are study guides that I will link below as well so that you can then read up on it if you're confused. However, you can miss seven and still pass, so it's not the hardest thing in the world. It's gonna cost you about 25 bucks, and it's good for five years. This shouldn't take you more than 30 minutes to take the test, so if you have to take your firearm safety certificate test and do the background check, you're gonna to wanna to give yourself at least an hour and a half, maybe even two hours just to be comfortable so you're not rushed on time. This firearm safety certificate does not allow you to carry a gun, does not allow you to carry a gun loaded or exposed in public. This is only gonna allow you to start background checks on guns in the state of California. That's all it's good for, and you need to bring it every time you start a background check. If you have a CCW, you are exempt, but there are very few of us out there, so this most likely won't affect you, and if it does, you're probably not watching this video. Now, a hunting license. Hunting licenses are important if you are someone that needs to hunt or if you're 18 to 20 and you wanna be able to buy rifles and shotguns. So a hunting license, how this works, I personally recommend that you first do the online training course and then go to a four hour in-class refresher course. It costs a little bit of money, but if you do the online test first, you then just go into the four hour test and mine was super easy, very friendly people. The people that give these classes are normally very safe, very friendly people. So it's not very difficult. It'll just take some time online and in person. So you're gonna have to schedule a time that works for you. 
So covering it all again, basically if you're 18 to 20, you're limited on what guns you can buy. You can't buy any handguns or semi-auto centerfire rifles or stripped receivers. If you're 21 and up, you can buy anything that's legal in the state. Firearm safety certificates are a thing that will cover your safety portion of it for all firearms. Hunting licenses allow 18 to 20 year olds to buy some guns and it allows 21 and, year, 21 and up people to buy any long gun. You may need to bring in some proofs of residency and you're gonna have to have a valid ID that does not say federal limits apply and has your current physical address. If you have issues like that, there is information. However, I always recommend that you talk to your FFL prior so that you don't come in and get messed over because they don't accept a certain type of document. So if you have any questions, hopefully this was helpful. This is a very long video, much longer than I wanted it to be, but California doesn't make this easy and it's unfortunate that someone like me has to take time out of their day for people to be under to be able to understand this. So if you have any questions, let me know. If you liked this video, leave a like. If you disliked it, dislike it. Subscribe if you want more. I make more videos like this where we talk about gun ownership in California and discussing the laws, legality, and morality of gun ownership. Take care, y'all.